Hi, I'm Ethan Weiner, co-owner of Real Traps, and this is my home recording studio. In this video, I'll talk about the resonances that exist in all small rooms and how they damage sound reproduction, especially at low frequencies. In this context, small room means a room the size you'll find in most homes. Many people understand that bass traps help to flatten the low frequency response in the room, but bass traps also reduce modal ringing, which is just as important. Modal ringing is similar to low frequency reverb, except it occurs only at certain frequencies. This is different from true reverberation that requires a large enough space and long enough decay time for multiple echoes to develop and fuse together into a single coherent sound. Although modal ringing and reverb are both related to the decay time in a room, modal ringing occurs only at a room's resonant frequencies. Modal ringing causes certain bass notes to sound louder than others and to sustain audibly even after the bass player stops playing that note. Ringing is created by room resonance and it causes bass notes to conflict with each other, making it difficult to discern which notes are being played. Ringing also causes what's known as one note bass. No matter what note the bassist is actually playing, in the room they all sound more or less the same. Muddy, boomy, and poorly defined. You can hear that something is going on down there, but it's difficult to pick out the individual pitches. For the purpose of this presentation, I'll use an audio editor program to play tones that are higher in pitch than the resonances that occur in a room. I'll then use an electronic filter, an equalizer plugin, to apply varying amounts of resonance. By using a higher frequency, you'll be able to hear what's going on without the sound being affected by the room you're listening in. Please understand this is not a contrived test, because a small room is a filter. Just like an electronic filter, a room enhances and suppresses some frequencies more than others, and also causes some frequencies to sustain for longer than others. Most people understand the relationship between the size of an object and its natural resonant frequency. Each of these plastic blocks has a resonant frequency, and the larger block's resonance occurs at a lower musical pitch. A similar effect happens in all small rooms, though in rooms there are three resonances, one each for the length, width, and height. For this demonstration, I've created an audio file that contains some brief click sounds. A click is useful to show how resonances are excited because a click contains all frequencies. This way you can hear what happens as different frequencies are emphasized by the resonance of the filter. Here's what the click sounds like alone. Now I'll add an EQ filter plugin so you can hear the effect of boosting different frequencies, and also hear what happens as the Q, or bandwidth, of the filter is changed. Q is short for quality, such that a higher quality filter emphasizes more of a pure tone. Although I'm using an electronic filter to create the resonance, the effect is identical to how a room alters music played through your loudspeakers. As you can hear, adding a resonance boost with a filter imparts a specific pitch to this click sound, and increasing the filter's cue makes the note ring for a longer time and makes the pitch more pronounced. I'm adjusting the filter so you can hear the change in frequency and cue. As the cue is increased, the range of frequencies boosted is made more narrow, so the tone becomes more clearly defined. Now I'll apply the filter to the file so you can see how the click waveform changes, Here's how the wave looks with a fairly low Q. Notice how the wave is now extended at each click, as the ringing caused by the filter decays. Now I'll set the Q to an even higher value and apply that to the file so you can see the difference. You can see that with a higher Q, the wave sustains for an even longer period. In a room, the Q is determined by the stiffness of the walls, floor, and ceiling. Now let's look at some graphs made using the ETF software. 
ETF is a great program because it shows not only the raw low frequency response of a room, but also the cue of the room's resonances and how quickly the peaks decay at each frequency. Here you can see that when the room is empty, the low frequency resonances are very narrow, which means the range of frequencies boosted is likewise narrow. After placing Mondo traps in the room, the resonances span a much wider range of frequencies, and the peaks and nulls are greatly improved as well. Notice how effective Mondo traps are even to as low as 40 Hz. The large peak there has been reduced considerably, and the huge null at around 100 Hz has been brought up quite a bit too. Likewise for the entire range above about 128 Hz. As we have seen, when damping in the form of bass traps is added to a room, the peaks and nulls are reduced, the peak bandwidths are widened, and the decay times are also greatly reduced. Now, when a bass player plays that fast run of notes, each note can be heard much more clearly because the previous notes no longer sustain and cause a conflict with subsequent notes. And with the reduced cue, a bass drum thump will not cause the room's resonance to create as much of a pure tone on its own. Rather, the drum tone on the original recording can now come through much more faithfully. Thanks for watching.